Hi there, and welcome to another podcast offered by the Delft University of Technology for the course Reasoning and Logic. In this podcast, we're going to take a look how, at how we can prove the validity of arguments written in propositional logic, and also how we, how we can prove the invalidity of arguments written in propositional logic. We do so using truth tables. Without further ado, let's take a look. So the question we're going to ask ourselves in this video is, is a certain argument logically valid? For our first example, let's take a look at this one. P implies Q, P, therefore, Q. Now, if we read this argument in natural language, for instance, if it rains, the street gets wet, if it rains, therefore, the street gets wet, it seems relatively straightforward that this argument is indeed valid. But what we want to do in this course is we want to see how we can prove the validity of such arguments and how we can do so in a mathematical way. In the book, Delft's Foundations of Computation, we outline one method where we apply certain techniques to show that an argument is valid. In this video, we're going to take a look at another method, a method using truth tables. Now, the first thing that we need to consider is what does it mean for an argument to be logically valid? Well, in an argument, we always have, or we usually have, a set of premises. In this case, we have two, P implies Q and P, and we have a conclusion. And the question we ask ourselves is, in all cases, where all the premises are true, is the conclusion also true? Now, let's take a look at how we can figure that out. So this is our argument. P implies Q, P, therefore Q. In a truth table, we have two variables, so four rows. And we're going to take a look at both premises, P implies Q, P, as well as the conclusion Q. Now, all four scenarios, we write it out. We've seen the truth table for this quite often now, so I'm not going to discuss it. And now we take a look at all of the rows in which all of the premises are true. So starting with the first row, we see that only the first premise is true and the second one is false. The same for the second row. And it is the third row in which the first premise is false and the second one is true. It is only the last row where both the first and the second premise are true. As a side note, I realize now that this highlighting sometimes doesn't really work in the software that I'm using. I'll try to fix this for future pencasts. So in all of the rows in which all of the premises are true, only the bottom one, the conclusion is also true. So is this argument logically valid? Yes, the argument is logically valid. Now for this one, hopefully, that comes as no great surprise. It's all we've already seen in the book, and we use it as a bit of a standard rule when it comes to deriving logical validity. So let's take a look at a slightly more complicated example here. Let's take a look at P if and only if Q, not Q, therefore P. Still, not all that hard. And as you can see from this, or hopefully you can see from this, this is not going to be valid, is it? We say that P is only true if Q is true. Q isn't true, therefore P cannot be true either. But let's see what our truth table methods want us. So again, we write down the premises and we fill out the truth table for it. And we write down the conclusion and the values for the conclusion as well. And now again, we look for rows in which all of the premises are true. And again, there is only one such row. It is the top one. In the top row, we see that both the premises are true, but the conclusion is false, which means that in this case, the argument is indeed not logically valid. Furthermore, this method has immediately given us a counterexample. Remember that when we're proving that a certain argument is not valid, we can only do so 
by giving a counterexample. In this case, our counterexample is when both P and Q are false. So, this argument is not logically valid, and the example, or the scenario, or the situation, or whatever you want to call it, where both P and Q are false, shows this. So that's it. That's how we can use truth tables to figure out if an argument is logically valid or not. And with that, we come to the end of this pen test. But I'll see you around for the next one.